want you to, uh, you know, I want to use this uh, session to start you, you to start thinking about uh, something beyond the physical world. <clears throat> So I'll go directly into meditation and then we'll uh, gonna see how it goes. So, so sit in a comfortable position. Keep the spine erect, shoulders relaxed. Focus out your attention to your breathing. Slow inhales, slow exhales. Relax your forehead. Relax both eyes. Relax the cheeks. Relax the chin. Relax the jaw. Relax the neck. Relax both shoulders. And now we sit in a comfortable position. If needed, you can use the uh, wall support. So you have a physical body which consists of different organs, brain <coughs> and different senses. And same time whether you actually see it or sense it or not, it's also uh, there is a astral body which also has these energy centers or chakras that we call. <laughs> and the corresponding to your brain is the manas. Physical body breathes <clears throat> oxygen, whereas your astral body is breathing prana. And these two bodies are co-joined, but they may not be breathing or you know, uh, uh, breathing prana or the oxygen <coughs> in a rhythmic manner, and that can create some problems. And if your bo physical body is breathing in one way and the astral body is breathing in another way then that could create problems. So the objective is to synchronize both physical body and astral body. So Gayatri Mantra has the Om Bhu Bhuvaswaha. Physical body is Bhu, astral body is Bhuva, and Swaha is the it's kind of a mental body. <coughs> And let's not talk about that uh, the, uh, because I think just focusing on these two bodies is also <laughs> important. But the corresponding thing in uh, the uh, Swaha Loka is Buddhi corresponding to the brain and Manas in the other two universes. So think that you are simultaneously living in these three universes, physical universe, astral universe, or the um, Bhuva Lok and Swaha Lok. And when I say you are living in it, think that there is a divine fragment within you and it's located at the Bindu in the in your head it's a point so the human being consists of 
bodies in three universes physical body astral body and the current sharir or the swahaloka body and a divine fragment within you now we the most of our um, the brains or manas or buddhi do not understand this uh, divine fragment they have no idea what that is and they almost you know work independently of that uh, divine fragment and think of that divine fragment in the current role it's an observer it's just observing whatever is going on all your life is because of that uh, divine fragment the divine fragment <coughs> willingly decides to enter these three universes because it wants to experience life but you know, it it can it is a powerful uh, substance but it has decided to keep the role of an observer now where does this uh, divine fragment come from so that gets into the cosmology and i won't go into all the details about how it is but think of it it's uh, at one point there is just uh, an ocean full of vibrations at extremely high uh, you know uh, intensity or frequency and it's just one thing nothing else it's just extremely powerful but there is no concept of two it's just one thing and at some point there is a that uh, divine uh, uh, it's called uh, let's call it as the <coughs> divine wholeness i'm not using the terms of uh, satya param and so on and at one point there is a desire that i am one and i want to be many and that desire is the cause of the manifestation and that's how the life enters the universe so what happens is the divine fragment it uh, emerges into smaller fragments uh, so divine wholeness emerges into divine fragments small or large uh, fragments and again if you ask the question what is the difference between the fragment and the wholeness then the answer is there is no difference just like if you take a bucket out of uh, uh, ocean ocean remains the same and same way you know these uh, uh, particular fragments they have the same characteristics maybe smaller in size but they have the same characteristics of the divine wholeness so there is no difference but in the process of that manifestation from divine wholeness to divine fragments some products are uh, created one of the products is the om omkar again it's at a very very high frequency uh, when uh, at that time and another one uh, is called universal Desi- divine mind or it's also called chitti it's kind of the plasticity of the universe the whole universe think of it is made up of uh, uh, that universal divine mind you can uh, uh, consider it as prana you can uh, uh, in some form you can consider it as matter but that's something you can also consider as a space between the you know any uh, particles 
but that's the universal divine mind that fills up the entire uh, universes and the what happens after the this uh, uh, the, the vibrations keep on going lower and lower so the, the vibrations of omkar or that uh, universal divine divine mind also start getting lower and lower and as they start getting lower and lower all these different universes are created so divine fragments as such don't have different characteristics so they they are similar <clears throat> the uh, you know uh, as a human beings the you know we have <clears throat> happiness <clears throat> pain all these kind of things sensations they are, are not applicable to the divine fragments and as this uh, vibrations keep on going lower and lower the universe is get created first uh, the uh, the most uh, subtle universe is the swahalok the next one and again there are gradations between that uh, uh, each of these universes <clears throat> and then uh, the astral universe or uh, <clears throat> bhuva lok and then finally the bhu lok so all these three universes uh, are uh, are uh, <clears throat> born and divine fragment willingly uh, it has a choice whether to <clears throat> get into life or not but they willingly to experience all these three universes decide <laughs> to enter these three universes now there are some rules that once you enter it's uh, not that straightforward to go back to the uh, the original universe is called jana lok so there is like a uh, ring pass me not between the three universes and the home of that uh, divine fragment and there are some rules that you know uh, once you enter you need to experience uh, uh, different things and so on okay and again if you can't go back you can be reborn so you stay in that uh uh, uh called mahakal or uh, ring pass me not so after one birth after you die you are in that area and again you can just stay there you, you cannot go back unless you clear up uh, all your uh, karmas but if you uh, you can either stay there or decide to be born again and once you decide to be born again uh, you know that uh, divine fragment will choose father and mother and uh, and then you know the uh, one don't want to go into all details but the baby is born and when at the birth what happens is uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, there is a uh, the swadhisthan chakra all the, all these uh, energy centers are already there when the baby is born and uh, there is a spark that goes from the uh, muladhara chakra all the way towards the top of the head and that spark creates energies of life and similarly there is another spark that goes from the swadhisthan chakra all the way up and that creates another energy force there are some six seven different energy forces i don't want to go into details but that's how the life starts and baby uh, there it is assumed that the baby cries because of that spark that that hurts and uh, and then our life begins so the life starts with that uh, your diaphragm starts uh, uh, going into perpetual motion and as long as the diaphragm is going up and down 
you will continue to live again you know they uh, that there are uh, so and it's uh, still this up to the divine fragment to decide whether to uh you know stay in this body or or leave so anyway that's just something that i wanted to talk to you about when there are many different uh, uh ways that we can uh, expand on this uh the what kind of uh, life forces are there each characteristic of those forces what do we need to do to synchronize the uh physical body with the astral body uh and all those aspects uh but the basic uh, question that uh, you need to answer for yourself is whether you believe in the astral body or any anything else beyond the physical world because <clears throat> otherwise you know it's like you know uh, um you know science will continue to you know we go deeper and deeper at some point a science may say yes the astral universe exists at some other point maybe thousands of years from now they to realize the all the uh, conditions of uh, uh, different universes and so on So it's a short uh, uh, kind of a meditation session. I just want you to think about it. So please open your eyes.